Thanks for watching. We appreciate you. Please, please subscribe. Shelters, they are one part of the equation, and the city is also grappling over how to address the opioid crisis. Now, the Tenderloin's Linkage Center, where addicts could openly use drugs with supervision, actually recently closed. And as the battle over opening more of these sites rages on, our Kenny Choi followed one man who's on a mission to make a difference all on his own. How are you doing, man? I'm doing good. How are you? J.J. Smith takes videos of his daily conversations with people battling addiction on the streets of the Tenderloin. I care. I have, that was my child. I want somebody that does this type of work to check in on my child. Do you want to go into a recovery program if someone um, offers you? I don't, I, I don't want to go to recovery. I, I've already Why not? been. I've already been, and so I already, like, uh, I think that they've taught me all that they could about, like, recovery. Smith's Twitter account is getting the attention of city leaders and even the fire department thanking JJ. He documents daily overdoses not as a passerby seeking clicks, but an empathetic friend genuinely trying to help a lost soul. It's about helping you recover and get, get yourself off the street and help you get some mental services that you need. I'd be willing to, yeah. His walk and talk is part of his daily routine. The 52-year-old father believes conditions are worsening from homelessness to open air drug trafficking and use near playgrounds. I want my kids and all the other kids to be in here safe. I don't want them to come out this park and have to deal with people right here selling drugs or people right here using drugs. I don't think that's okay. What makes everyone think that we're just gonna sit around and wait while we're under attack? At a town hall hosted by the nonprofit Together SF, a network of citizens critical of supervised injection sites, Smith showed up to meet face to face with elected officials. People dying out there. I'm right in the middle of it. I have my own brother Rodney. I have Joseph. I have Paul. All five of those people, two of them in the same day. All five of them died in the same week of fentanyl. People just as frustrated about what's happening know of what JJ is doing on the streets and online and listen to how drug dealers viciously attacked him. This is what happened to me just by doing it. But I still get up every day and do it. I still get up every day and do it. I got clean and sober. Recovery advocate Thomas Wolf, once homeless and struggling with heroin and fentanyl addiction, is calling for abstinence and recovery-based strategies, along with a harm reduction approach. He's critical of housing offered to addicts through city-funded single-room occupancy hotels. We need to expand treatment and we need to have options for people. We can't just have everybody going into SROs where hundreds of people are dying of drug overdose all the time. You need to have recovery-based therapeutic communities. I come to y'all right now today asking for any type of solutions that can help me, help me in what I'm doing. For now, Smith keeps checking on struggling friends. He believes harm reduction strategies and the current system are failing. The only solution he can work on is to convince each person there's a better life through recovery, one step at a time. Groups like Health Right 360 and the Coalition on Homelessness are advocating for more supervised injection sites. The mayor has said she wants to wait until legal issues are sorted out at the federal level. Thanks for watching. We appreciate you. Please, please subscribe.